So now we're heading to Saddle Abbey. Now, it's old. It's very old. I don't normally do abbeys. I'm not that interested in old religious things, you know, like abbeys. But this one, supposedly, is spectacular. It could, the word saddle itself is a Viking word, or it could be a Viking word, which means uh, Sandy Valley in Norse. So it's a Viking area, and this abbey must date back a long time because there's a lot of tombstones there in pristine condition, apparently, from the 13 and 1400s. And I can't wait to see them because I think this is going to beat what I saw at the last place with the wonderful uh, gravestones. Let's do this. Let's do Saddle Abbey. Saddle Abbey. So I've just been having a look around this abbey. It's very small. I thought it was going to be really big, but it's not. But it's interesting. You've got gravestones. I think that's the most modern I've seen. 1928. And you've got one there from the 1600s right next to it. There doesn't seem to be any order at all. There's not many gravestones, there's probably only about 70. But they're, they're pretty randomly placed, they're not... Uh, there's no order, there's no order. You need order in an abbey. Abbeys just don't work without order. I have actually already seen the very, very old uh, gravestones. I just walked past them, I just hope I'm going to be able to get you some good pictures through the glass because it's protected by glass, you can't actually go in there. But there's people actually buried inside the abbey and I, I find this quite odd. They surely must have been buried here after it became a ruin because it wouldn't be able to be used as an abbey, surely. Um, 1936, although that doesn't look as if it belongs here. These look original, these small ones, look at these. They've been here a long time. Am I weird enjoying looking at graves and standing right next to people who are dead six feet away from me? I get a kick out of it. But it's only because I'm trying to appreciate your life, Alan McGillan, McGillay, Donald. I'm only trying to let the modern people of this world remember you. I hope you don't mind. Sorry. Just stood on somebody. You've clearly got a very old tomb there. Gravestone there. Now, it's covered in moss. Nobody knows who's in there. If I lived here, I really would take all that off. There must be carvings, there must be writing. It must say who it is on that stone. It should, all that should be removed. It does look beautiful, don't get me wrong. But let's, let's enjoy the person the person's life of who is underneath. Let's find out all about them, research them, and it might be someone incredibly important. You've got the same problem here. Two laying next to each other, covered in moss, you can't read anything about them. Next to this beautiful one, look at the Fleur de Lis on there. Is it a Fleur de Lis? Similar. Don't have to be exact, does it? Just makes me sound good, saying something in French. So back there you've got some nice big headstones of important people from over the last four or five hundred years. Down here, they meant nothing to anybody. Look at them. Look at state of that. There's somebody buried here. We don't know who it is. But look, that's all you've got to go by to remember him. And that's not the worst of it, there's, there's worse than that, but uh, I can't just keep showing you common nobodies. I need to show you some important people. They're over here. Come with me, come with me. This is fantastic because I thought this was enclosed, I thought these gates were locked. They're not. We can actually come in and look at these headstones properly. The best ones are at the other side, but let's take a look at these. Wow! So I think there's 12 in this little, they've built like a little touristy place. I think there's 12. I can't see anything on the first one apart from that. It looks like a mother holding a baby, I might be wrong. Or a caveman holding a club, who knows. 
This has a lot of Celtic look to it until you get up here and it's like a knight. As I say, these go back to the 13th, 13, 1400s, I believe. I can't make anything out on them. Or that. That's nice. Look at that. Huge sword there. So this was some kind of knight or warrior. And on top, like a Viking boat. And coming to the other side, the best five in here. You've got two monks here. That's what I've read up on them anyway. They're supposedly monks. So you've got the religious side. The second monk is headless. Why? I don't know. Maybe that, yeah, it's just chipped off or something. I don't know. But two monks there and then you get, I'm not even going to show you the middle one yet. I'm going to come to this side. Look at this. We're on to knights. These are gravestones of knights from Robert the Bruce's time. 1300s, 1400s. And the detail on them is amazing. This one isn't quite as good, but it's got a picture of a lady next to him, which means it might, he might have been buried next to his wife. No names, unfortunately, but this one, look at the detail on this. That is the most well-preserved gravestone I have seen. Look, he's got a sword there. The most well-preserved gravestone I've seen from anything earlier than 1900. And this is from 13, 1400. Fantastic. Apparently this best one, um, it's got a Latin inscription on it, which means, what, what was it? It was commissioned by a Donald McNair, probably in memory of his father, who was called Neil. Neil McNair. This probably belongs to Neil McNair, and the McNair family still live in the area as farmers. That is unbelievable. I love history, don't you? You've, you've just got to love it, haven't you? Because these carvings are just so good, they're presuming that this was where the school was, where all the masons were taught how to uh, be masons for this entire area, because all the best things are in this area, so they reckon there's a, a mason's school nearby. So do you remember the island I was on earlier? Look at it now. Wow, that's exactly where I walked, and it's a double rainbow. This place is like out of a movie. I've just been driving along and two tiny little bambies, two little deers just walked in front of me. They weren't too scared and they just hopped over there and down there. But I can't see them now. Over here at the other side of the car you've got the rainbow. And up here, well I don't even know if to drive on any further. Big hard man up here, look. Growling at me. A big ram. Oh no, he's not growling at me. It's my windscreen wipers. I thought he was growling at me. Just stood there staring at me. Please keep donating. All the links are in the description. Go to digginthecoast.com and click donate and help some very poorly kids have a wish come true. That's the end of another beautiful day. Very, very busy day. And to be honest with you, until an hour ago, I thought I was going to be sleeping in the car. I couldn't find anywhere to camp. It's it's much it's it, uh, it's much easier when you've got when you're backpacking when you've got a car as well. Finding somewhere suitable where you can park a car because they're all single track roads. I've been driving around for literally probably three hours, but I've ended up back in the same spot I was in yesterday. Um, I'd given up. I thought it was going to be dark about 40 minutes ago and it's not, it's still light, so... I'm not having a barbecue or anything tonight. I just bought a uh, chicken, cooked chicken, drumsticks. Um, because as I say, I was planning on sleeping in the car and just having chicken drumsticks and some Branston pickle. <laughs> I'm sick of these, I'm, I'm getting sick of them. They're all over the place. <laughs> See you later on Digging the Coast, three, six, five. 
So thanks for watching guys. Um, I know they're a little bit dull. There's not much comedy in them from the Kintyre. I remember that when I was editing them. Um, when I get out with my Julie, you've got another one from the King Tire to come, and then three with Julie. They get quite funny. There's some funny bits. So just bear with me. You know, you're learning a lot. Just remember, you're learning. I'm teaching you. I'm your new history teacher. Please keep the donations coming in, people. I'll see you next time on Digging the Coast. Three, six, five.